Hi everyone, I'm the Allrounder, or at least the person who runs the Allrounder channel. It's a bit weird for me to show my face, but I'm just here to explain why I haven't been uploading. Um, just don't get me wrong, I really like making these video compilations. It's really fun to just browse Reddit and Instagram and find funny clips for y'all. But the problem is, is that I've been really busy with school or university or college or whatever you want to call it but more importantly i've been busy with trying to get an internship for the summer of next year but unfortunately i have zero offers i've sent about a hundred plus applications by now and i've got nothing and the problem the reason why getting this internship is obviously so important is so that, you know, you can get experience and there's obviously the entire likelihood where um, you'll get a so-called return offer, meaning that you do well enough in the internship so that you'll be able to get a full-time job after you graduate and you don't really have to worry about graduating. You don't really have to worry about getting a job or finding one once you graduate. You already have something lined up for you. And let me just tell you that this process has been incredibly demoralizing. I frankly don't know what more I could possibly do. So for background, I... Um, so I basically... There's this whole, like unofficial but official ranking when it comes to finding finance jobs and they when it comes to like ranking they, they rank universities based on how employable they are and generally employers i heard that whenever they're screening like resumes or something they kind of look out for that university name. It actually matters, apparently. And they have tiers to this. There, there's levels to this stuff. So the school I'm going to, which most of you have probably not heard of because it's... I don't know why it's not heard of, but that's just how it is. It's called UCL, which is short for University College London. As you can surmise, it is in London. And although it's not you know, on the level of, like, Oxford or Cambridge or a place called London School of Economics. Usually it places really well, and there's, like, this general consensus that, you know, people who go there should, well, if you employ them, they have a really good chance of doing well in the job that, oh my god, my glasses are terrible. That if you employ people who study there, there's a really good chance that they're going to do pretty well in the job because when they were in high school or sixth form or whatever, whatever it's called, it's different between America and the UK, but I'm just using general terms that everyone understands. Because when you're doing your exams in high school, uh, getting into these schools requires you to have like a top to get like top grades and usually for and and the, the system in the UK is that you need free subjects like for example like well I did physics math and chemistry you need three subjects and the standard that they usually accept is the grade which lands you in the top 10 nine percent of that subject and you do that three times in a row and Beyond that, you have to, like, for my course, it doesn't have a very high of an acceptance rate. It's only, like, 18% when I joined. Now it's 30, but when I applied, my year had an 18% acceptance rate, but for some reason, it's gone up. But obviously, it's going to fluctuate here and there. So, yeah, in order to at least qualify to apply, it's like, just to justify applying, you have to have those grades. And on top of that, you have to just make this essay, this motivational essay that just generally describes why you want to, you know, 
why you want to study the subject. So, um, over a year and a half ago, I think, I'll, I got accepted to this course. It technically wasn't my top choice, but it's on that list that I mentioned earlier. So I thought, okay, that increases my chances. I'm going to be able to come here and I'm going to be able to start a new life. And I've been dating this person in the UK for four years now. And, you know, I made a post regarding that. And it would really suck if I couldn't establish that level of legitimacy. Like, I'm in my second year. I graduate in 2026. And I'm already 22, and I just feel so far behind. Like, there's just, like, I swear my whole life I've always been, like, the second best when it comes to the thing I'm most good at, which is academics. And being second best has its, incred like, incredible limitations because I'm so close to being at that point where I can just, where I'm at the best, and whatever I apply to, I just get whatever the hell I... I want, but in this situation, why is my neck so fatty? It's because of the angle. But in this situation, I'm, I, I've got absolutely nothing. I've sent out a hundred applications. I literally only got two first round interviews, which I thought I did really well in, but in the end, I got a rejection for it. I even have this other, I even have two referrals to like different investment banks, apparently, because one of the referrals I literally had to go through some sort of competition to win the referral and they promised me that when i got this referral that i would get the role immediately or easily but it's literally been i literally applied at the late in late of august and it's the middle of november and i've heard absolutely nothing and it's incredibly demoralizing to look across linkedin and see people just saying oh i'm delighted that i have been selected to be part of this thing and then it's like, okay, so I think to myself, like, just, it's incredibly lonely to be, I mean, this is how, this is just the reality of life. When you grow up, you're literally on your own, but ultimately it's incredibly lonely to be the only person who still believes in himself because they send these rejection emails and they're just like, Oh, we have too many candidates, so we're unable to provide feedback. I literally talked to this HR woman for 40 minutes and you don't even want, you don't even want to give me any form of feedback. So like I poured my heart and soul into preparing for the interview and I thought I gave good answers. I thought I gave some sort of motivation. I thought that the little experiences I have were still relevant. Like, I mean, I literally got the top 10% in my cohort, which I already reminded you, reminded, which I just stated was really hard to get into the first place. I'm literally in the most quote unquote prestigious investing society in my university. And last week I did some sort of presentation in my group and I thought it went really well. I mean, I felt like I felt valid because there's loads of people in that, in that, society who are super accomplished they have like free two, two to three internships and i'm just sitting here just yapping away in my presentation and i'm just answering questions and it's like for a moment like my imposter syndrome just went away but now it's just back in full force because i literally have nothing and i don't know what i don't know if anyone well any firm will believe that by hiring me that the revenue that I will somehow bring to them will justify the salary that they're going to pay me. It's incredibly, it's, it's, it's incredibly distressing because it's like, I just feel incredibly delusional. And when I'm studying, when I'm studying my notes and I'm writing down all these notes and I'm doing all that homework or the problem sets is what they call them. And I attend these tutorials and I end these lectures and it literally doesn't matter how much, because, like, it doesn't matter how much passion I have for the course, because passion doesn't pay the bills, or it doesn't get you 
th that fucking bowl of ramen or sushi that I want to independently buy for myself as a normal functioning middle class adult. And it's like my brain is just constantly overthinking and it's like, am I really as smart as I think I was? Or am I just that unlikable that no one wants to hire me or no one believes that I am teachable enough to, to, you know, contribute to a company? And yeah, it's just incredibly demoralizing. And I've been, there are so many nights when I've just slept at three or four in the morning because I literally spent one and a half hours tailoring a nice cover letter for a specific company to no avail to just say, oh, sorry, we, we cannot provide you individual feedback. You were not good enough. And I've revised my CV multiple times. And yeah, and I even have to balance like eating right, which I haven't been doing, exercising right, which I haven't been doing enough. Like you try to socialize, which I haven't been doing enough and it makes me feel uncomfortable anyway. And yeah, all of that. And the YouTube channel is like the 17th priority in that list. But like, honestly, my YouTube channel, it's like one of the only external things that still have some sort of approval to me. Like people in the comments are like, oh yeah, the way you make the compilations are slightly better than what the general channel does. And that, that makes me feel quite honored because I actually feel like my efforts lead to some positive impact like you know even just the other day i had an accounting exam and i got an a plus for it and it doesn't matter it literally doesn't matter because i don't know what these companies want when it comes to paying me i get absolutely it's just yeah i, I look terrible from this angle and my hair is like it's just a bit of a mess but yeah, I have I have a lecture in six hours and I have to and I only have like four and a half hours to sleep for that. And yeah, you know, this video, like it could be like some sort of it could be a bad thing because some random employer might look at this and be like, oh, look at this guy. He has no resilience whatsoever and he's too emotional. But honestly, I'm just tired of like conforming to like being completely stoic being this corporate like this boring person who i mean of course like my my work ethic is mutually exclusive to just how emotional i can get sometimes because if you ask me to complete this this and this i'm going to do that and more but ultimately like depression will still get to me like i am diagnosed with it and it's just something that i can't really shake off and i feel it's in, i feel incredibly selfish when because like i don't know it's just something i can't control and i wish i could just view life more positively but it's it's really difficult to get out of it but yeah it's like my emotions hasn't really affected my my work because, you know, I've still been putting these applications and I've still been working on these group projects for my investing society. I've still been keeping up with my studies. I'm literally, I think, the top 30s, like, low. I'm like the top 20 something among like 300 of my cohorts. So that's, a, I'm top 9%. I don't know the exact number, but they did release that number at some point. But it's not been affecting my work ethic. It's just, but it's really come at the cost of my health. My average sleeping time has been like three, four. And then I wake up for lectures that happen at nine at like 7.30 or eight. And it's like, when will my, when will my efforts ever come to any sort of fruition? And how the hell can I prove that I'm capable of the job? If you don't let me do the job, it's like you don't eat. Only two people decided to interview me. And my, 
it seems like I'm so delusional that I think I did well for the interview and I articulated my thoughts correctly and I answered the questions to the best of my ability and I don't even get feedback for it. I only got two interviews. I don't know what I studied all of these years for. I don't know what I went to the military for and dropped out for. I don't know why I spent all those times being upset myself or working hard when it feels like I'm going to amount to absolutely nothing. And I don't know if anyone ever wants that. I ever wants my brain to think stuff for them. I don't know if I'll ever be useful to any company in the world ever. And that scares me. So um, I'm just, I just took this all in one take. There was obviously no script. But yeah, um, since most of the applications are now winding down, it looks like I'm going to have nothing for the next summer. And I'll just maintain my studies and I'll just upload more. Try to get the channel churning again. I know I can get it churning again if it just actually if I actually upload it for once. There's still demand for these videos, so yeah, I'll upload every week, every two weeks, probably. Um, just thanks for hearing me out. I don't really want any sympathy. I just, I mean, who am I kidding? Sympathy is good, attention is good, and that's something that we all crave. And I wouldn't mind getting it from this video. But what I ultimately wanted to do is just to speak my mind and just, you know, not feel alone in this. Really. Yeah. Bye.